Every one of us has our own unique relationship with money that's accompanied by our own personal narratives. And if you're anything like me, many of us have a story that is deeply entrenched with a scarcity mindset. That there's not enough out there for you or simply not enough to go around. Sadly, saving money and managing money is not part of most of our education. And even just talking about it can provoke emotions of apprehension, embarrassment, or inferiority. So it's worth paying attention to our feelings and reactions when we have conversations about money. And in the interim, here are 10 proven tips and resources to support your growing relationship with money. Probably the number one thing you can do to improve your financial situation, and this is gonna be a lifelong process, is change your relationship with money. I myself grew up in a family that had an incredibly complicated relationship with money, deeply set in a scarcity mindset. There was never enough for us, and if someone else was making more money, it felt like we were losing because of them. These kind of habits and emotions are deep and complicated, and it takes a long time and often making more money before you start having a more positive relationship with your income. But at some point, having a positive relationship with money is going to improve your ability to evaluate how you can make more of it and how you can appropriately spend what you make. Not having money is a negative thing, but having money, whatever amount you have, is positive. And having a positive relationship with your income is a critical place to start. Once again, this is way easier said than done, and we're not gonna pretend like this happens overnight. But whatever you can do to increase your awareness around your relationship with money, money, how you feel about it, how you use it, what positively or negatively impacts that relationship will help you understand the things you want to keep and the things you want to change as you move and grow through your life. With your money, as with many things in life, it can be a powerful tool to ask yourself, are you speaking to yourself in a way you would speak to a friend? Do you give yourself the same advice around your money as you would to a friend? Often, we're much harsher on ourselves than we would be to a loved one or someone we care about. So try and give yourself a bit of that love as well as you develop a more positive relationship with your income. Budgeting is a hot topic, and especially in the emerging financial education world. For some people, it works incredibly well and functions as a system they can use to track their progress and work towards goals. For other people, it can end up creating somewhat of a cyclical trap of shame. Anytime you don't meet your budget, it makes you feel bad and that makes you feel like you're failing and why do it in the first place and you lose control of your money again. However, one element of budgeting can be incredibly powerful and that's creating awareness and accountability over your income and your spending. So if budgeting seems like something positive, it's a great way to get your finances on track. Start with your income and subtract all your mandatory expenses, see what you have left over, and work from there. You can add your goals in the future on a timeline and you'll know what you have to do to get there. However, if you've tried budgeting before and it doesn't work for you, think of it this way. Start on the journey of being aware of your financial situation. So check in once a week, once every two weeks, once a month. Look at what you made, look at what you spent, and ask yourself if it makes sense, if that's helping you work towards a goal. And if it's not, what can you cut? What can you add? It's also really valuable to keep in mind that in most cases, people don't have a saving problem, they have an income problem. That's probably why you're here trying to start a creative business where you work for yourself, whether it's a side hustle or a full-time gig you're looking for, you want more control over your income. So only use budgeting if it's a powerful tool that works you towards your goals, but watch out that it doesn't become something that's a source of shame for you. Another fantastic tool you can use to get better control of your money is creating separate accounts for separate purposes. Most banks and financial institutions allow you to have multiple checking or savings accounts, and you can also have high yield savings accounts, credit cards, there's many ways to manage and keep track of your money. But having specific accounts for specific purposes gets you a head start on being accountable for the ways you want to spend your money. There are endless versions of this and we highly encourage you to do some research. From the Dave Ramseys to the Tory Dunlaps of the world, whatever works for you is valid and useful. It took me a while to find something that worked, so it wasn't a blueprint I could just apply. I had to play with it and use it over time until I found what worked. I have one checking account that is attached to a debit card and I only keep about $200 in there at a time. 
That's in case I need to make a cash withdrawal or if one of my other cards isn't working. None of my paychecks, none of my income, nothing is attached to this account other than the debit card and the only way money goes in there is if I move it from my other checking account. Now the only expenses that I have leave this secondary checking account are the big ones. My rent or mortgage, any automatic deposits I have to retirement accounts, just the big things I know I want to handle right away come out of this account. Outside of those two accounts, I have a high yield savings account where I store the majority of my money and I have a credit card where I do all of my purchasing. We'll talk about some different systems in a moment, but I just wanted to share my system so you get some context for how it can work. And if you have a similar or a different system, let us know in the comments. We always love to share and learn from each other, especially when it comes to something as complicated as money. One one method that works great for some people is getting rid of the plastic. To avoid sneaky interest rates and other predatory credit card practices, you can simply rely on the cash you have on hand to manage your finances. There are different versions of this, but they all revolve around some sort of envelope or bucketed system. So you're taking your known expenses and assigning a category to each bucket. You can have groceries, rent, dining, and savings. And then evaluate what priorities you have, what goals you're working towards and assign a monthly amount to each bucket. That's the cash you get to spend and you have to be strict about sticking to it if you're using this method and if you're aggressively trying to save or work towards some financial goal. This technique can help you stay accountable as well as making it difficult for you to stray from the goals you set for yourself. Because once you've assigned an amount to a bucket, that's all you get to spend for a month. If that doesn't sound fun or productive to you, there's the alternate version. The completely reverse option is to go paperless. If you do this right, there can be a lot of benefits. Many credit cards have beneficial point programs and both debit and credit cards have cashback options that can be appealing. Those rewards can add up over time and if you're disciplined about keeping track of your credit and how many cards you have, it can be a very focused way to manage your income and expenses. This is what I do and growing up in the family I did, I was terrified of credit cards from a young age. All of my experiences early on were very predatory. I ended up paying a lot in interest that I didn't have to, and a general lack of understanding of how the system worked led me to have a bad taste in my mouth. After many years of digging deep into how my credit card works and how I wanna utilize those advantages and which one best serves the lifestyle I wanna live, I found a system where I pretty much just use one credit card exclusively. So although my primary expenses come out of that secondary checking account, anything else, the food I buy, dinners I go to, if I buy a new camera or anything like that, I use my credit card. What works about this for me, aside from the credit card benefits, is it also gives me one place to see all the money I spend. Aside from the basic money I have to spend, what does it cost me to live the life I want to live? And monthly, how do I account for that? This only works well though if you make sure that you can pay that card on time. The minute you start accruing interest debt is the minute you start losing control over your income. With home loans and car loans, it can make sense, but with your daily expenses, you're gonna end up paying much more than the price tag on the thing you bought when you bought it. So this can be a great system and it works great for me, but make sure that you understand exactly how your credit card works and that you're able to pay off your entire balance, not just the minimum due, at the end of every month. Now, this one is a bit tricky because there's a lot of opportunity for shame to creep in. And like I alluded to earlier, shame is the beast our financial insecurities rides on. So we're not gonna tell you to avoid impulse purchases. Sometimes you want some cake, sometimes you want some coffee, sometimes you want a new camera or a new guitar, whatever it is, your money should make you happy and being able to freely spend it when you have that drive is a privilege we're all working towards. So just be aware of that impulse. Give it some time. Create systems for yourself that give a little time in between when the impulse arrives and when you actually make a purchase. So whether it's adding things to a cart and saying, I'll check in tomorrow if I still need it, or asking a friend, do I really need this? I really want it. Do I really need this? Whatever kind of check and balance you can create for yourself, 
at least allows you the opportunity to take a moment and consider if you really need that thing. If it is going to bring you happiness and it is going to make your life better, then consider doing it. Money is there to be spent, so don't fall into the hole of shame. To effectively save more and foster a better relationship with money, it's a good idea not to overwhelm yourself by trying too many different approaches simultaneously. Trying to employ multiple strategies without fully giving it time to understand how it impacts your daily life will probably lead to a more confusing and frustrating situation than you're already in. So it's important to choose one approach, dive deep, understand it, try it for a while, at least a few months, and see if it works for you. Is it helping move you towards your goals? Is it helping you manage your money more efficiently? And most importantly, is it improving your relationship with money? If you find a system that leaves you feeling excited even to engage with your money, then you found something that can last you a lifetime. One big element of this is fostering gratitude, not just for what you have, but for yourself, for the work you're putting in, for the fact that you're trying to improve your situation and you're working hard to make things better. So although we all almost always want a little more than we have, give yourself some dedicated time to pat yourself on the back, not just for the fact that you have any money at all, but that you're working towards something better and the goals that probably drive you. Helping your family, building a business, creating an impact in this world. At the root of your drive to have more money is probably a noble cause. So remembering that you're great for those things and the cause you're working towards has a lot to do with how you continue to foster a positive relationship with money. Like many things in life and especially the things we talk about on this channel, creativity, building a business, getting new clients, working towards impacting more people more effectively, it's important to be consistent. Science says it takes 21 days to develop a habit. So establishing that amount of time to try something and be consistent with it will really give you a sense of if it's working for you. So whether it's regular journaling, putting things on your calendar, setting automatic deposits and transfers, set yourself up for success by using the tools available to you to remain consistent and establish your relationship with money as something that is a form of habit. Once something becomes a habit, it becomes much more part of us and it allows us much more accessibility to analyze, change, and grow those habits. One great way to stay consistent is to set it and forget it. Just about every financial institution allows you to set up automatic transfers within that institution and to outside accounts. So if you're dedicated to your goals, you've done the math and you know what you want to save, Set up an automatic transfer to pull that money out of your account, and this can help hold you accountable and remain consistent. And after time, as you actually see that money grow into a significant amount that makes a difference in your life, you'll become more aggressive and more dedicated to creating these automated systems that allow you to achieve your goals without thinking about it every moment of the day. The last and final tip we're gonna give you today is to practice progress over perfection. This is a valuable mindset to embody in in many parts of your life, but especially when it comes to money. It's essential to give yourself and others grace when unexpected expenses pop up or you fall short of your financial goals. In a capitalist economy, there are many systemic elements that are out of your control. Factors like inflation, access to opportunity or financial education, or whatever complex history you, your family, or your demographic might have that has put you in the situation you are. So many of these things are out of our control regardless of our individual efforts. So grace is the most compassionate thing we can give ourselves. So long as we're working towards it, we're trying, we're learning, we're building towards the future we want, we're on the right track. 
And one of the only things that we truly have control over is our mindset. So working towards an abundance mindset and establishing the systems that help you build a positive relationship with money is just about the only thing any of us can do. After that, all of these tips and tricks and ways of managing your income are just that. They might work for you, they might not, but the number one core goal should be having a positive relationship with money. Once you find a system that allows you to grow a positive relationship with money, you'll likely uncover absolutely personal systems and structures that work best for you. The ultimate goal is for you and your loved ones to be healthy, happy, and taken care of. It's a long road for all of us, and one YouTube video from this guy isn't gonna solve all your financial problems. And hopefully the things we talked about today, if they're not directly applicable to your life, at least help you analyze your relationship with money. Analyzing and raising awareness around our relationships with anything are how we start building, changing, and growing them over time. Thank you so much for watching and spending your time with us today. We know that these things are complicated. They're big topics and the best way to learn is through our community. So hop in the comments, let us know if there was something in this video that resonated with you or let us know if there was something we missed that you wanna share with the community here. It's always a pleasure getting to spend time with you and we'll see you next time.